international circuit to round two of the Flutsmo Sport LMP2 Championship. I'm joined alongside Alex, aka the console. Uh, I think we're in for a cracker here tonight, don't you think? Absolutely. I was lucky enough to uh, jump in on a couple of guys getting practice earlier today. Um, and something we need to keep an eye on is going to be the fuel loads. The, uh, this year, this is looking like it won't actually be able to make it, or if it does, it'll just scrape on a, fuel, on a uh, full tank of fuel. So, actually expecting to see a few pit stops today. Yeah, certainly, and quite a few spins as well. We just saw the uh, spunk light already spinning out. It's these very cold temperatures, it's going to be a nightmare trying to keep those tyres warm. Yes, yeah, sure, you're not wrong. This is a bit of an odd track as well. It's um, a lot bumpier than you'd think, um, especially into turn one, sort of, as you sort of initially turn in and hit the first apex just on the e exit. It's sort of like a little... Uh, dip or hill that just unsettles the car and if you haven't got it um, sort of set up and facing ready for it it will just rip the car away from you so turn one is going to be dangerous and uh, turn four as well the, the fast left hand and there's a nasty little curb on the inside which will throw these cars into the air so plenty of uh, danger awaits um, and as you said a very cold track is going to make it difficult to get the hard tyres up the temp so all to play for really it certainly is. And uh, whilst we've got a bit of time here, we might as well run through the standings, uh, which are also the results from last week as well. Since we've only had one round so far, so at the moment we have Immortalis sitting pretty at the top of the standings after getting the hat trick last time out at Dubai. Snatched pole position, fastest lap, and the win. Uh, then we have Bruce Loss in uh, second in the standings, seven points behind him. DJ Ledgy in third, who won't be joining us today, um, which is quite a shame because he's pretty well last time out uh, then it's Chris M Sport fourth place in the standings Dirk Diggler DCFC fan McToasty Green Gaming uh, Taijo Tirev uh, Spunkmara Mark Pogo Mojo Porscheman uh, Lecky and 074 Leggy who also will join us today so of course in place for the two Leggies we've got a few reserves joining us so we have um, the brilliant talents of Mia um, who did is just so quick in the LMP twos joining us, which um, yeah should be quite interesting. To see if he can uh, if uh, they can shake it up a little. Mia is uh, known for having bags of talent in these cars. Uh, she used to be the LC before yourself, uh, and was gutted that she couldn't get a chance to race. So uh, nice to see her making a little cameo uh, showing tonight and. Uh, I think that she's going to be really pushing uh, the top end of the grid in this race, really making these guys work hard for their final points. Yeah, definitely. Um, she's got a new username as well, just to let you all know, which is uh, Flux Ralph. So if you see that uh, username around, you know that that's Mia. Um, and of course, the other reserve today, we have Jonah who I believe is making his debut in the LMP2s, but correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, so, should expect some decent points maybe from him, but definitely both of them are definitely going to shake up the grid and uh, try and steal a few points away from the uh, permanent drivers, definitely. And I want to keep an eye on his lecky, as you said uh, in the standage rundown, he's currently sitting at the bottom of the grid with uh, no points, not having a great time out last time round. Um, he's no slouch in these cars at all, and if memory serves, he's probably in the Marrick as well. Um, which, on its diesel power, I suspect will be able to go to the end on a fuel tank quite comfortably. Uh, yeah, he is in the Marrick today. Definitely he's there. Uh car of choice in these LMP2s. Definitely not uh, the most popular one though. So just get a few people join us out on the stream now. Welcome Jack, welcome Snarlin. Hello Finley. Let us know your race predictions, who you're rooting for, who you're supporting in the comments. We'll try and give as many shout outs as we can throughout the race. And uh, whilst we've got a bit of spare time here, we we'll, uh, might as well have a look through the qualifying at the moment. Got about 13 minutes left to go, and at the moment, Immortalis is 
uh, looking like he might be set for a pole position again uh, today. He's half a second quicker than Mia. Um, then we have McToasty in third, doing quite well up the grid there. And then um, it's Jonah in fourth. Uh, another reserve who's doing very well at the moment. Um, Dirk Diggler in fifth. Um, Tib in sixth. Uh, Chris seventh. Taijo in eighth. Not looking too good for Taijo so far this season. He was ninth last time out in Dubai, which is um, quite a way away from the second place. Uh, sorry, third place he was last season. Um, then we have Pogo Mojo in ninth. DCFC fan, 10th uh, at the moment. Green Gaming, 11th. Porsche Man, 12th, who didn't score any points last time out. Um, he didn't finish the race, unfortunately. Then it's uh, Spunkmeyer in 13th. Uh, Mark in 14th. And uh, Lecky still hasn't set a time yet, which is quite interesting. Um, and it seems like we've already lost the driver. We're down to 15. I'm not too sure who it is, to be honest with you, but... Um, it looks like it could potentially be Bruce. I think it is Bruce, actually, yeah. Hard That's, to guess. Yeah. I think it is going to be Bruce, yeah. That is uh, quite a surprise. Bruce is really fast in these LMP2s. And um, not having him here might allow Immortalis to run away with it today. I know Immortalis was saying earlier that he is uh, looking to carry on the momentum from last week's clean sweep. Uh, clean sweep. Um, desperately trying to get uh, his first Flux, uh, Flux Motorsport Championship belt uh, done and dusted. And you reckon LMP2 is going to be the championship that he does it in, so... He, uh, he will definitely be happy with that. He certainly will. And um, it looks like Mia though, still half a second away from Immortalis. So, oh, and Dirk Diggler has just gone second. Only two tenths off from Immortalis. That's a really good lap time from him there. He looks like he could be, could potentially have a three-way battle for the lead going into the race tonight. Um, with, between Immortalis, Dirk Diggler and Mia, depending on uh, how things go. Definitely going to be a case of tyres again. Um, last week it was the heat that was the problem, and uh, this week it's the cold that's the problem. So um, really mixing it up for the drivers here. Oh, we just see Dirk Diggler going around. That's not going to be good for him. It's not going to help, and I think we're going to see uh, quite a lot of that. I suspect a lot of these guys are opting for a low downforce um, set up this track uh, obviously with the, the large uh, start finish straight you also this back straight down here that uh, me is now going down isn't uh, isn't sure either so I reckon a lot of guys uh, take quite a bit of wing off and they when they get onto the curbs or get into the tight hairpins they do run the risk of spinning the wheels up um, so I reckon that won't be the first time we see that um, that happened obviously Bruce just able to get back in the lobby there we're only nine minutes left so he's gonna have to uh, get out and get it done really yeah he's gonna try and set a decent time here in these last nine minutes but I think it might even take I'm not I haven't done enough practice to tell you to be honest but I think maybe a lap or two to get the tires up to proper temperature for a decent hot lap Absolutely. It depends what tyre compound they're on, really. Um, the hards, they take uh, at least sort of four or five laps normally to come in anyway. Um, but I've, I think you're right. I think over the softs, maybe one, two laps. Um, we can see a few of the guys weaving on their out laps, um, trying to get a temperature in them as quickly as possible. So all to do with the tyre compound, I, I suspect for the race, the guys will be opting for the hard compound. Um, and just going straight to the end on one set. But as I said earlier, it's going to come down to fuel this time around. The Ligier yeah, Nissan not having quite enough to make it. Um, or, if it or if they do make it, they have to do some serious fuel saving, so a considerably slower lap time. So fuel is going to be the one this week. As we just see there, Mia's just flown across the line. It's in a 123.209, which is... Um, about seven tenths off the Immortalis still though, so 
Immortalis is going to have a big smile on his face at the moment and be able to keep that pole position. He must be feeling the pressure. Six, six thousandths of a second behind, uh, with Mia behind him. Dirk Diggler sitting only two temps back. Um, Chris McToasty eight and nine temps back. Uh, we've got to go all the way back to six before we break the second barrier. So the uh, top five really on top of each other in terms of pace at the minute. Yeah, definitely. And it's uh, quite a close battle as well in the mid pack, I've got to say. Gap between 6th and 9th at the moment is uh, only about 8 or 9 tenths. So that's looking quite close as well. So we could have a real battle on our hands soon. I hope so. I hope so. I'm kind of hoping that um, because this track's a little strung out more than uh, we're probably used to, I reckon we're going to see quite a lot of overtaking down these main straights. The, the drag played a, a big part in it. Um, but the guys are going to have to be careful because... When these cars start to follow each other, the aero loss is huge. Um, so it opens itself to a, a few more bumps. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that it, uh, I reckon we'll see maybe three packs form up, sort of uh, uh, top five, top six running together, um, seventh to about twelfth, thirteenth together, and then the bottom sort of three, four, um, all staying within the sort of realm of each other and duking it out to the end. I do hope we'll see quite a few overtakes. Um, I can't say it's. Ooh, just Jonah getting a bit squirrely there um, on the exit of turn one. Um, but yeah, I hope to see quite a few overtakes today. Um, it looks like it's shaping up to be a really interesting race. And it always is in these LMP2s, to be honest. And um, so yeah, I hope. Uh, it always brings something different every week. It really does. And uh, since we've got a bit more spare time here, about six minutes to go, why not run you guys through the calendar? So we've already had Dubai last time out, and uh, we've already run through the standings as well. Next week we've got Sakito GP, which should be really interesting track, um, especially in these high downforce cars. Um, then it's Sports and Sugo, um, going to Bathurst for round five. That's going to be very interesting <laughs> in these cars. Um, might see quite a few crashes hopefully at Bathurst. I think we'll see quite a lot of crashes at Bathurst. <laughs> <laughs> um, then it's Kota GP, round six. Um, Indy Road for round seven, which we've just had for the GT1 Championship was at Indy Road uh, this week. And there was some great racing around there, so hopefully we'll see the same in the LMP2s. And then finally, to round off the season, round eight, um, Daytona Road. So we just see Giona just completely messing up turn one there, going very, very wide. And that's what I was saying, there's like a little like, hill or dip or mix of both just on the exit of turn one that it doesn't matter what car you're in, it rips it away. And same here on turn four, if you get that exit curve just wrong, as you can see him getting a little squirrel on the exit, it will rip the car away from you. Um, quite severely there's no catching it if it's if it's going to go so the guys have to be super careful around there um getting on the curbs and uh, trying to ride that the, i would probably say in the race they're going to air on the side of caution and break just a little bit earlier and take a slightly slower line but play it safe yeah that would be a good plan i think i mean you know to get to finish first you have to f oh dear there me <laughs> there you go perfect example <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, one way to heat up your tyres i got to say that'll do it <laughs> it certainly it. will it might also make them a little square as well which won't help <laughs> uh, something to note at the moment here we've only got three and a half minutes left and Lecky still hasn't set a time he's sat in the pits there I'm not sure what's up with him, but um, he better hurry up because he hasn't got long. If I know Lecky, he's probably eating. <laughs> 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 and his crew is frantically trying to hoover up the crumbs out of the chair that they have left him ready for his 45 minute endeavour. He would have been doing practice all day as well, so he'll be confident in the car. Um, he should have a set up, he'll, he'll know where he's going. I reckon there's a, yeah. a little bit of tactic play going on here. 
maybe. Especially being in the other car as well. We're just on board here with Bruce Law, who it seems that joining the lobby late has affected his qualifying a bit. He's saying eighth place at the moment. I think maybe he just can't get the tyres up to temperature quick enough, maybe. It could be. It also looks like he's struggling to find a gap to slot into. They have some clean air. Um, time is running out for him though so he's going to have to get a bit of a move on he's going to get it done it looks like he's left is that Chris he's left through there um, he's going to try and get a bit of a gap between this car where he's just left um, and hope that it's enough um, I think he maybe get one maybe two laps at it depending on how quick he can get there <laughs> yeah Looks like he's probably going to get two laps out of it as he just crosses the line there. So um, he's got a decent chance here to set a really good qualifying time. Um, Emil Tallis has gone into the pits, so it might be a close call for him. He's just exiting now. I think he's he might just get it round in time, set another lap, but uh, it's going to be close. I think he's uh, going to do a just one lap with the car full up just to get a bit of a feel for it um, this won't be a, a quick lap this will just be a, a feeling lap as it were just for the race coming get get the car fully loaded up um, see how it's going to handle in these opening laps yeah that's probably a good plan actually oh dear that's, that's why not, he does it. yeah <laughs> that's not the racing line at all <laughs> But Dirk Diggler, McToasty and DCF all in the pits, so they're not going to get another go at it. Um, Dirk Diggler obviously happy that he's done enough to hang on to that third spot. Um, Jono and Chris probably got something to say about it if they're on a fast lap now. Um, so we'll see a few more get in the pits there. Tyjo looks like he's done enough mm. for the final 30 seconds. Yep, and as the clock ticks down, we're going to jump on board with Mia here. Let's see if she can set a really good lap to knock Immortalis off that top spot. Oh, that's going to lose a couple of attempts there. Just oversteering a little bit on the exit. And this will be part and parcel with these low downfall setups. The, the corner exits, they're going to have to be so careful. And there we go, the clock's hit zero now. Let's see what it, Mia can do she comes into the last little part of the track here oh what's it gonna be and not it, enough not enough she hasn't improved let's hop um, take a look at Giona here let's see if he can do anything to improve looks like, Lec looks like it's Lecky just behind him there warming the tyres up yeah. Because he found his ooh, shoes, found his keys. Giona just gets really squirrely with that rear end. I think that's going to uh, cost him a decent lap here. Oh, he runs wide on the exit there as well. I don't expect to see an improvement here, and no, we don't get one. Let's hop on board with Bruce. Can he set a quicker time? No, he can't. What about Ty Joe? Looks like he's come out of the pits just to uh, maybe a, f a feeling lap, as you call it. There, there must be a better name for that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the chat can think of one. Oh, oh, God. That's. Uh, that, that was not the way. No. The engine and just would go. not be happy with that. And that is the end of qualifying here. Uh, Zuha International Circuit. Um, Immortalis takes the top spot today with a 123.1 and then um, 600, uh, well, 700 thousands. Th thousands, sorry. Um, behind is uh, Mia. Then we have Dirk Diggler, about two tenths behind again. Then it's Giona, uh, Chris M Sport, McToasty, uh, Tibov in seventh, Bruce Law in eighth. Quite far down the grid. That's uh, not very typical of Bruce, we've got to say. Um, then it's Tyjo in 9th, DCFC fan in 10th, 
Pogo Mojo 11th with a one place good penalty. Um, Spunk Meyer in 12th. Green Gaming 13th. Porsche Man 14th. Uh, Mark 15th. And Lucky 16th with no time set. And now we're going to the two minutes of team time for the drivers here to uh, get their setups ready. And um, yeah, it should be interesting here. Who are you backing? This is this is the real question. Well, we've got two minutes. Who's I think. Your, who's your money on? I think I'm gonna have to go with Mia. I uh, I think she's got the experience and the talent to back it up to get a really decent uh, race here today. And it's worth noting as well she has the inside line into turn one. That is true. That is true. I'm. I normally get told off for giving a commentator's curse to Immortalis, so I'm going to pick Dirk Dingler, uh, currently sitting in third place. I reckon that if uh, Immortalis and Mia get, get a little bit sort of too heavy and they start fighting too hard, um, I reckon he might be able to pick up the pieces. Well, whatever happens, we're certainly expecting a really good race here. Especially with Bruce mid pack as well, eh? um, and Tyjo. Tyjo's definitely no slouch in a P2. Um, we saw him last season round, uh, I believe it was Donington, he was able to hang on uh, to the lead for most of the way. I think he just got let himself down a little bit with tyre management. So the, uh, the mid pack is not um, by no means a slouch. No, definitely not. And. Um... Tick down now, about 25 seconds left to think of think time now. And uh, I'm going to get ready for lights out very shortly. And uh, it's worth mentioning as well, I think today is uh, Chinese New Year and we're at a Chinese track. What a coincidence, I definitely didn't plan that. Oh, it's, uh, we, definitely, we definitely plan that. Oh, yeah, that totally. Was, that was by design, everyone, by design. Here we go. Five red lights, and we're off here at Zuhai. Everyone opted to get to the uh, inside as quick as possible. It wants yeah. to push really hard. And uh, Mia's taken first here already. Immort uh, sorry, no, Immortalis taken first. Uh, Mia's just sliding behind there, following him very closely. Uh, Digger lost it to turn one as well, get a little sideways, he's dropped back down to fifth. Looks like Bruce has had a stellar start, already up into third already. He def looks like he definitely didn't need a good qualifying time. Oof, see some amazing fighting there. Between me and... put the pressure on nice and early. <laughs> yeah. Don't let Montalis have a break. She's trying to go around the outside, no, not quite. Me at this point is going to do everything she can just to get Immortalis off of the racing line and, and make a mistake on the on the exit of these corners. You can see she's going to push the outside and come back up underneath, or at least try to anyway, um, for the run up to the start finish line. And Bruce will be sitting there and he will be loving to see this. Um, this is exactly what Bruce is going to need to happen to, to make this uh, to make his strategy work out. I'm assuming. Um, let the guys at the front battle it out, waste their tyres, waste the fuel, and then pick up the pieces at the end. Uh, looks like Mia's going to try and go around the outside here into turn one. And she takes the first place beautifully. Immortalis slots right in behind though. He's going to look to try and win that position back as soon as he can. Oh, not didn't quite have the drive to uh, take the inside into there into turn one. Four. Well, it looks like Bruce has fallen back quite a bit now. It's about a uh, looks like about a two second gap now back to Bruce, and he makes another mistake there, losing a couple of attempts. As I said, fuel saving is going to be a big part of this race. So, um, although it probably looks like he's. Uh, Drop it back a little bit, he's probably saving some fuel for the end. Maybe trying to make a one stop or um, a no stop work. 
And I've just seen as well, Lecky has had an amazing start as well. He's up into seventh already in the Marrick. I told you he's no slouch in that Marrick. Um, he's a big fan of diesel power. He's definitely got that car working for him. Um, I reckon he'll get, he'll get a little further up if he uh, if he has his way. Mm, yeah, definitely. And we look back up, flip on over to Immortality. It looks like he's uh, started to drop back a bit now. Um, so it's around about six temps behind me here now. So I'm not sure if that's going to be fuel saving from him or whether he just doesn't have the pace at the moment. Well, it's the um, smart thing to do at this stage of the race. So if they, well, the looks of it, it's pretty clear these guys are going to be fighting out to the end, and it's, we're only. Um, not even five minutes into the race yet, so you don't want to burn everything you have up in those first, you know, uh, five, ten minutes and have nothing left for the rest of the race. So sometimes it's not worth fighting for a position all the way. At the end of the day, you've only got to be in that position when you cross the finish line at the end. So plenty conservative, fall into line, follow me a, for uh, a bit further into the race, conserve some fuel, conserve some tyres, and then try and make something up at the end. I suspect is. Uh, What's going through his head at the minute? And it looks like Mark has come into the pits already here. I don't know what's going on with that pit crew though. That's, that uh, looks like it's de definitely had a dent. Yeah. The pit crew don't look overly active. I would, I would say. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of thought being put into that. <laughs> Not a lot of action. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like I think it's a cracked windscreen as well, and definitely some. Um, damage on the front end by lots of things so looks like it's quite a big shunt he's up there I'm not sure if he actually collided with anyone else I mean Pogo is the only person who's um, towards the back of the grid who's dropped down so I don't know what his car is looking self-inflicted is Pogo's car looking I think it in okay shape Ooh. as we saw in the wall there. Green, Green Gaming, gaming. That is, uh, that's not going to help him at all. Uh, I think that's it's... probably too little downforce. I would argue. <laughs> yeah, looks like a really weird place that he spun there as well. Yeah. It might have just been a, a as, bad corner exit. As I said, with these low downforce setups, you've only got to get on the curbs and the throttle slightly wrong, and he's just going to uh, whip the car away. I suspect he's had a bit of a tank slapper on the exit, and um, he's trying to collect it and, and correct himself to end it up backwards in a wall so that's going to be a nice lengthy repair for him yeah get a coffee and a tea cake I think when I saw that out certainly will be and it looks like Lecky's fallen back here it looks like he's spun at exactly the same place I think by the looks of things he's looked to have damage I don't know whether he's spun hmm. or whether he's serving a slowdown I think he is going to be damaged looking at where he was on track so it's a shame to see him he had a great start getting up to him. Seventh, I believe it was. Yeah. So, yeah, he's off diving in the pits now for damage. So. Uh, that that's a shame to see, as you say. Fantastic start from him, but um, clearly the cold tyres doing their part here. And it's like we've got a battle going on here for seventh place between Jonah and Sweetmo. Let's jump on board and see how things are going. He hasn't, Spong hasn't quite got the legs down into this run. I reckon he'll try to do something on the brake into the inside. Things better are in good call. Little lock up there in the front. Yeah, that's not going to help. Too many of them. No, yeah, that's not going to help the tyre work if you have too many of them. <laughs> Looks like he's started to fall back a little bit now, but um, we'll definitely keep an eye on that, on that battle. And meanwhile, looks like Immortalis is still on the back of Mir. This is more like the Immortalis I know, which is maximum attack all the time. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> normally do the conservative bit all that well. Um, but right. he, he made it work last week in Dubai, and that was definitely uh, tyre shredding weather, so. It's going to be. No reason why we won't be able to make it this week. It's going to be interesting, though, to see if he can keep this up for the whole race, because, like, as you say, it, they're probably going to have to pit if he keeps up like this because I can't see any fuel saving going on here while he's fighting for the lead. It's like 
Bruce is sort of not falling back any further than two seconds. So Bruce Arbor maintaining that. Montalis is trying to get down the outside. This is going to be tight. If they're not careful, this is going to be an accident. Oh, oh, they oh. both spun. Cool bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any contact there. I, I, I'm not it sure though. Like Mia, Mia took the inside away and got a little bit too heavy on the throttle uh, and went round. And Immortalis was trying to get back underneath on a bit of a cutback manoeuvre. Um, and Phil issued to the same fate, probably getting on the brakes to not crash into Mia, um, which would give you the same effect. So the pair of them getting a little bit too. Um, a little bit too keen and now they're both paying the price. Dirk Dinkler now picking up that second place and Bruce now sitting out in front which is um, never where you want Bruce to be if you're trying to win. And he's uh, it looks like all that fuel saving has paid off here. He's uh, taking the lead anyway so I don't know if that was all his master plan but um, whatever it is he's definitely starting to pull away here now but it seems that actually Dirk Diggler is uh, starting to catch him a bit now, as soon as I say that. And um, it'll be interesting to see here whether Bruce will go full attack and try and create a big lead or if he'll keep up what he's been doing so far and try and save a bit of fuel and uh, try and get to the end with a no stop. Well, if we, if we know Bruce, he would have done um, plenty of testing for this race so he will already know exactly what strategy he's running um, and he will probably be trying not let um, other factors sort of alter it, he'll be sticking to his game plan as much as possible um, looking at it, it looks like um, that defending on this track isn't quite as hard as you might think um, which is a little bit surprising to me actually. I thought it would be quite difficult to depend on the, defend on these long open straights, but the guys are definitely making it difficult. So, from Bruce's point of view, I would argue that he needs to stay on the game plan that he's got to save the fuel, save the tyres, um, and just defend as of when it comes up. Um, having faith in your own abilities, really. Um, it looks like in the background, yeah. that thing just gets swallowed up. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure though. It looks like he's taken back second place, but Imus is going to have the inside line. Oh, that looked like an accident way to happen, and there we go. <laughs> Mia's yeah, getting. I told you turn one was going to be a killer. Mia's just had another shunt. That's not going to help her front end, I don't think, at all. I wonder where we'll see Mia pit now and get uh, a little front end damage repaired. It's not like. Um, Sort of in touring cars, you can give the cars a little bit of little bit of punishment, and they they won't mind too much. Whereas these LMP2s are such fine machines that even the slightest of bump can have such a massive effect on the feeling of the car that you're almost always going to want to go get it sorted. I think we might see her dive into the pits here because if she's got damage anyway, she might as well. I think because then she can top it with some fuel to get to the end of the race and just go full attack and make up the time lost. It's not a bad plan. I think... Like Dirk Diggler's having some yeah. issues as well, so I wonder if we'll be seeing both of them come to the pit. No, it looks like Mia's stayed out. So, maybe she thinks that she can get to the end of the race with that damage. But speaking of pits, it's like Spunkmeyer is in the pits already. So I'm not sure if he's picked up some damage. Can't really see from that angle. But um, it does look like it's damage. It doesn't look like they're changing tyres. So. Yeah. So uh, I think he might be able to get to the end of the race there if he's smart. If he's smart enough to have put a bit of fuel in as well whilst he's there. And uh, maybe a change of tyres, depending on what he's feeling like right, and how bad the tyre wear is. Then, um, you know, he might be able to make up some of the time lost. I'm not sure. Time will tell. Time will tell. In about 30 minutes, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like Immortalis is not closing in quite as much as you would 
probably like. I think it's hard to tell because the the way the, the track is bunching them up, but I think the gap is staying around sort of two two point three seconds. It looks like yeah, I'm gonna hop on board with him for a minute just to see if he's doing any lifting coasting, maybe trying to save fuel. Doesn't look like it. It'll be a bit easier to tell when he gets into this tricky sector one here, but uh sounds to me like he's just going full out attack at the moment. That, that's that's probably true. He'll be seeing red with Bruce out in front and he'll be uh if he wanted to close that out now, I think. Mean, you see him really pushing the limits there, look, get him wide, he wants to be careful, he doesn't get a slowdown for that. I mean, it looks like he's already made up three temps on Bruce, just in those first four or five corners. Um, so, I think, oh, that sounded a bit interesting. I um, don't know if anyone else heard that, but it sounded to me like he either... He went up and down the gears a few times. Yeah. Like he... Well, if, uh... Worth mentioning that he is on a pad, um, which does make his pace that a little bit more impressive. Um, so maybe just getting a little bit more fingers and thumbs there for a minute, but he seems to have got back on top of it now. I suspect it was probably getting rid of a slowdown. Although it looks like he's picked one up there, so his name just rushed to red, so whatever it is he was trying, it didn't work out. It looks like uh, Mia seems to have dropped back a bit now as well from Immortalis. So I'm not sure if that damage that she got earlier on has played a part in that, but um, definitely looks like she's dropping back, I think. Almost six seconds now. And uh, a four second gap to Immortalis. And a six second gap to Bruce. And then further. About two seconds, two, two and a half seconds down the road, we got Dirk Diggler. So he seems to be lacking a bit of pace as well. But meanwhile, in the mid pack, it looks like we've got a very close battle here between McToasty and Chris M Sport as Chris M Sport just takes that place back and McToasty going round the outside here. He's going to have the inside line coming to this left hander. Ooh. No, Chris seems to have kept the uh, the place. That's brave, brave on the outside. My toasty love the inside now for this little hairpin. That should probably get that done. This is some very close racing here in the P2 Championship. Side by side, two white. Ooh. That was brave from Chris there to just cut off McToasty. And McToasty's got the uh, the draft on the straight now. It's going to be inside line for him into turn one, but can't quite make it stick. Um, which is it's just uh, loads of action going on here in the mid pack at the moment. And uh, just behind them, it looks like Taijo and Tibov are having a good battle. Ooh, Taija might have picked up a slowdown there, I think. Doesn't look like it, actually. If he has, he's definitely ignoring it, opting to just defend the, uh, defend the position. Tipping him right on the back of Taijo, so I expect this is going to be a Outside inside job. Ooh. There it is. Oh, yeah. Yes. Just for good measure. <laughs> Let him know that Taj uh, is That's there. It. We call that a locating tap. <laughs> <laughs> Taj is defending very well here, very aggressively. Yeah, he, uh, he's gonna have to watch his tyres. I think he's gonna keep this up all race. Tibby just applying 
mountains of pressure, Jumbo's trying to force the mistake instead of trying to overtake. Which he's going to try and hang into turn mm -hmm. one here. He's a little bit too far back. Gonna have a look anyway. Oh. Oh, there it is. Tiger running wide. And there was the mistake. And it'd be interesting to see here if Tibby can pull away from Taijo. It did look like Tibby was carrying a lot more speed um, through those corners that we were we were on board with, so I don't think it should be too much problem for Tibby to hold Taijo off. Um, barring that there's no no mistakes made, but he definitely like he was carrying more momentum. And I've just seen look how close in is to Bruce Law now. He's really close that gap in the, uh, the last few laps. So we're coming to... What, just Ooh, over, someone's gone round, that? that? It looks like that was Mark. Could be wrong. Is it what Talis is going for? Oh, the oh, oh. Bit of push and I mean, the stewards are going to be wanting to have a little look at that. Yeah. And again. That's very heavy pitting. He will tell us should do the right thing and give that place back there. As long as he's trying to hang it on the outside, I know a little bit of a little touch. He's going to have to That's watch very out there. From both of them, they're going to want to be a little bit more careful than that. We always end up in the stewards room or um, even picking up damage. Yeah, if they keep it up like that, they'll end up in the pit lane. Um, Getting the damage fixed, and Immortalis is really defending hard, trying to keep Bruce behind. But uh, we know how fast and precise Bruce is, so you know it's going to be very interesting, especially as we come into the the later stages of the race, um, and tyres uh, starts to wear down a bit. It'll be interesting to see whether Bruce can. Maybe overtake him or tell us later on. I reckon that's going to be his game plan. I think he's going to sort of sit and try and hang with him tell us as much as he can. And if opportunity arises, obviously he's going to try and uh, take it, but not going to overextend himself in trying to keep up. Um, at this point, I think he's going to wait until the last sort of 15, uh, maybe even 10 minutes, um, and we're going to see the engine turn up and you know, powering off up the road on better preserved tyres with a little bit more fuel that he's definitely going to make to the end. I think Immortalis is playing a dangerous game and sort of risking it all for the win. But, uh... And uh, it's interesting to note as well, it looks like Mia started to close the gap as well to Bruce. I think that, that gap was about uh, six seconds to the leader um, few laps ago it's gone down to about 2.3 seconds now so looks like she's on the charge as well maybe with the same plan as Immortalis well she would have caught up a little bit of time when Bruce and Immortalis were a little sparring match so definitely one to keep an eye on especially if we think she's got a little bit of damage as well but Bruce is getting right back up on the back of Immortalis there coming into that hairpin um, maybe we are both wrong but Bruce is just going to go for it. Maybe. Um, as you say, time will tell. It also looks like just in the backfield, Lecky is starting to close up on the back of Porsche Man. So um, we saw Lecky jump from the back of the grid up to seventh in the opening laps, have a little bit of an incident with the wall, and has dropped all the way back to the back of the grid again. He's now working his way back through. So it looks like he's on the car to take 11th, I think 10th might be just out of reach um, depending on happen what happens with um, Taijo and uh, speaking of Taijo it looks like he's managed to stay on the back of Tibby um, Tibby not quite pulling away as much as we thought he would but he's uh, still a bit too far back I think to make a move there as we hop back up to uh, Bruce Law in second place. Yeah, is blocking off the inside line there, stopping Bruce from getting back and underneath, like we saw Tibby try a few laps earlier. Bruce opted just to stay in the draft for now, 
Um, and you were you were right, Jack. Mir is starting to just cruise up onto the back of these guys. So very shortly, this is going to turn into a three-way dogfight. It's going to be very uh, interesting to see who's going to come out on top in this three-way dogfight, as you say, because um, we have three excellent drivers here who um, all have three quite different driving styles. Immortalis is usually all out, flat out, you know. Bruce is usually quite a lot more precise and uh, likes to play long game. And Mia is a bit of both, really. She could, um, She's definitely got the talent to um, push hard, but um, she also sometimes likes to hang back a bit. There's definitely three different styles of driver on the track at the minute. Um... I thought uh, it's hard to put a bet on any of them. They're both, um, all three of them, with um, different different aspects of uh, driving, as, as you mentioned. Um, I think Mia maybe has it, the opportunity to take both here. Um, I see Bruce and Immortalis getting into a bit of a, a bit of a dogfight, and Mia being able to just sneak through in amongst all the carnage and claim something. So. That's who I'm going to go with. Ooh, see that Immortalis just defending so hard. He really wants to keep Bruce behind. That is really the only option. <laughs> keep Bruce <laughs> yeah. behind as long as possible. Immortalis will probably be trying to back Bruce up into uh, Mia and see if he can start something between them two, try and give himself some breathing space. Um, but it looks like it's just not not coming good for him um, but then we see Bruce is not being overly aggressive he's giving uh, Immortalis these sort of little looks as we just saw there um, just letting him know that he's still there he's, he's almost doing uh, we saw Timmy do a few, a few laps ago just applying lots and lots of pressure onto Immortalis trying to force the mistake more than force the car around um, which is definitely the, the longer game to it and, and as I said there's still 20 minutes left to go um, and you've only got to be at first for the end, so there's no immediate rush just yet from Bruce's point of view. Ooh, that's not going to help him, running a bit wide there on the exit, getting up onto the grass. It's not going to lose him too much time though, because he's still got the draft of Immortalis to keep him going. And um, that's going to help him with fuel as well, having the draft, but uh, it doesn't look like he's too concerned with fuel at the moment. Uh, Bruce Laws. I've got yeah. a feeling Bruce has already done the fuel saving and he's he's ready to go now. He definitely wants that win after his uh, dominating uh, season uh, last year. It's definitely going to be you know, quite interesting this season because it seems like so far it seems like Immortalis is quicker than Bruce. Um, especially after... Uh, we saw last week at Dubai Immortalis taking pole position, the win, and the fastest lap. So Immortalis has clearly got the pace, and um, but so is Bruce. These are two really excellent drivers. Well, this is it, and they wouldn't be here if they didn't want to win. So they've all got the desire. They're all hungry for it. Um, it's just a case of who's going to get it. Um, as you said, Bruce um, was. Uh, very dominant last season and is um, he's the, any time you see him start to any championship you know that it's going to be uh, a tough win um, over him so Immortalis has definitely felt himself up to the challenge Mia um, has beaten Bruce before in the GT3 she I think she claimed the second place spot pushing Bruce back to the third so this, uh, this is definitely the, the sharp end of the um, of the driver pool and, and well it's, it's where we all want to be I think <laughs> I, I would certainly love to be uh, as quick <laughs> as these three that's it, that's it. <laughs> oh dear looks like Bruce has made a mistake there here comes Mia Not quite enough uh, enough pace to snatch second away from Bruce there, Mia. But uh, 
she's it was definitely a real smart game there. Took away the inside really early and parked the car on the apex, forcing Mia to go around the outside, knowing that's the horrible part of the track. And as we saw coming into this fast section, Mia actually had the better run, but Bruce was able to just put his car just in the right place to sort of negate any advantage Mia has, or forcing her to fall back in line. Um, very smart driving for me, I'm trying to make the, the uh, better or worse situation as Mia's getting a little bit on the dirt there, that, that will not help. Bit of a commentator's curse, I think, there. As soon as you're talking about her, um, <laughs> yeah, just made a mistake as soon as you started talking about her. And a uh, quick flip down the grid here, it seems to be quite a battle going between the teammates of Giona and Chris. Looks like I can't tell if they're teammates or if they've just picked the, the exact same livery. Um, I'm not sure. No, sorry. So it's a 15 51. I think it is, yeah. They have a. You would need the, uh, the binoculars to see the different wing wheel colour, though, from the wipe of the box. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like uh, quite a few battles starting up across the grid here. We have one between Joan and Chris. Looking down, Tibby and Taijo are still going at it. Um, that's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top there. And um, it seems like a bit of a battle here between Paul Schramm and Lecky. Quite a bit of a gap there though. But uh, Lecky's still on charge. Lecky has been closing up sort of lap by lap, that looks like it's green gaming in under Ooh, blue flag, just getting in the way again. A little bit of help getting out of the way. I think they will, yeah. And uh, let's see how Mia's getting on here. They're all within a second of each other now, this top three. What a battle we've got in store for you today. We said it was going to be close, I didn't realise it was going to be this close. With 15 minutes left to go. It could now go. I think we're going to see if pits are going to happen, I think they're going to be happening sooner rather than later. It's going to be very interesting to see who's going to come out on top here. It looks like Bruce just waiting for that perfect opportunity. He doesn't want to make any mistakes here and uh, give up his second place. And, uh, hop on board with Mia here. Oh, so Mia's trying to make a move already. And they have a great view of the uh, ensuing battle here. So head into this little right hand kink, easily flat out in these cars. And there we go, Bruce is checking it. Oh. Immortalis forcing him wide there on the exit. And uh, I think I saw a little lock up there from Bruce as well, which might have um, not helped him much. Bruce tried again, another lock up from Bruce. He wants to, uh, he probably wants to start minimising those before he. Uh, Bruce has probably realised that he has enough fuel that tire to go to the end now, and this is where I was saying earlier on in the race that the engine has been turned up, pressure's on now. Now it's go time. Certainly is. See, hop on with Bruce. Is he gonna try and make a move down the inside here? No, he knows better than to do that. It's unlikely to see anyone get on the inside there. You'd get such a poor run down this long start finish straight. It's better to save it up and get a look in turn one. Look, he's too far back at the minute, so it'll probably be in turn uh, five or six now. The hairpin that's coming up after this little section here. Looks like we've got a little black marker up the front there. Looks to be green gaming from this angle. He, was, he had a bit of a suggestion to get out of the way before, so he needs to be making moves. Hopefully he'll uh, take the hint this time and get out of the way a bit sooner. After Lecky's... Uh... Here, here it comes. This is going to be it, I think. So Bruce will be staying in the draft all the way up this run and through his next subsequent left-handers and it'll be the very next hairpin. Um, I reckon it'll be an outside sort of cutback manoeuvre to try to get it done. Green Gaming really standing in the way for far too long there. These front runners are not going to be happy with it. It's 
Bruce looks like he got a bit wide there. Just touched the grass, I think. Ooh. Yeah, green game. <laughs> Remember to get out of the way this time. Looks like a bit of a gap though that's started to arise now. Between that did not help Bruce's plans there, Green Gaming. Oh, wow. Karma has come and got him. <laughs> that would be getting on the exit exit curb of the final corner there. That clipping the grass at full speed. That that will uh, that will have that effect. The racing gods did not approve of him uh, not getting out of the way. <laughs> and there, Jack's connection has decided it has had enough. It obviously heard him talking bad about. Green Gaming. I'm going to do my very best to bring you the final stages of this race. I cannot change any of the cameras, so we are stuck watching uh, Immortalis, Bruce, and me a battle it out for the final top three spots. Hopefully, they stay nice and close together, um, and we can see it out to the end. What a race has been though thus far. These these top three here, uh, Immortalis. Bruce and me are not leaving each other alone and it looks like in the little intermission Bruce has managed to get the move done so currently sitting in that top spot Immortalis with it all to do with only 9 minutes 30 left to go and Mia still hanging on to the back there not uh, Mia not being able to make too much of a headway into getting it done just yet but it could be uh, I suspect that she's just hanging on um, waiting to make something at the end for those of you just just joining us as i mentioned giacomo's collection deciding that he has had enough playtime for one day and has been booted off um i am stuck in the one chair so we are stuck watching immortalis bruce and mia battle it out for the final seats but it is better than uh, not seeing the end at all as we see immortalis getting right up the trumpet of Bruce there Bruce still able to hold on to that top spot for now defending really hard parking the car on the racing line there forcing Immortalis to get out of the way uh, get onto the brakes looks like Immortalis is going to make another move to the inside into the hairpin here with Mia just still lurking in the background these guys will be careful not to touch I wonder if Immortalis is going to get the drive up into the next uh, left-hander complex Bruce will have the inside so we should be able to defend that relatively easy and as I say that, Immortalis trying to get back underneath, needs to be super careful not to make contact, so easily done there, as we go flat out through this corner, Bruce and Immortalis doing extremely well to give each other enough room uh, for racing there, Mia still just hanging, lurking in the background there, not able to get up um, and really start applying pressure, or have a little sniff around yet, but definitely not out of the frame just yet, so... 7 minutes 50 left to go we're probably going to see another uh, maybe 4 or 5 laps depending on how it um, cycles around with them on track they're starting to get the front 3 behind uh, blue flags now so this traffic is not going to help at all as we can see someone getting a little bit wide there this could be a little bit messy if they don't sort themselves out quite quickish that looked to be Porsche man from memory. You can see Mia getting up onto Immortalis here, forcing him wide, but I'm sure they made any contact. There's Green Gaming again, so he's um, already got caught once under blue flags. Get a little, little, uh, little suggestive nudge and where he should be going, but letting these guys through. And as he collects Bruce, uh, Immortalis, sorry, that is catastrophic to this race. Um, more importantly to Immortalis' race, unfortunately guys, as those of you just joining, I cannot change the cameras so we are stuck following Immortalis and now his, um, his pain and suffering he will share with all of us as we uh, watch him out to the end. The stewards will definitely be having a look at that one. Um, Green Gaming looked like he was just sort of just in limbo on the outside of that uh, corner, not really getting out of the way but at the same time not really moving either. Um, yeah, definitely not what, definitely not what we, uh, what we used to seeing within uh, from him. Normally, much more wear out on track, so definitely to be looked at. So, is Immortalis going to pit? No, he isn't. So, he's obviously either um, weighed it up against the uh, time left, or just 
happy with the way the car is still feeling for the minute 5.8 seconds and falling back from the top two now Bruce and Mia are going to be on their own to the finish Mia looks like she's still sitting about a second back and I don't think if the pace that she is displaying throughout the rest of the race um, is what was the the uh, her full speed of it then I don't think she's going to make any moves onto Bruce unless Bruce makes a mistake which is normally extremely rare and I think uh, Jack and Flush you are right that was um, catastrophic really that's 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 not what we want to see especially after such um, a thrilling race all the way up to the, the closing stages um, shame to see it looks like Immortalis is still going to be able to hang on for third place so she should still get some decent points out of it but not the win that he was looking to carry over from the last week so his campaign is going to be uh, severely dented after that one and I'm sure there's going to be, uh, be an inquiry and probably some words said back in the lobby. So whilst we are following Immortalis round, as I said, I, I cannot change the cameras. Giacomo has left and taken all the, all the tools and all the controls with him, the sod. Um, maybe he's just a bit of an Immortalis fan trying to get him some more airtime. We don't no so whilst we've got a bit of time let me just run you through what we've got coming up for flux this week with some big news coming at the end so um after tonight's race you are going to be treated with a double header on saturday where we have got the indy cars coming at eight o'clock eastern time they're going to be at willow springs a tough track and we saw the gtes go there uh last night i believe with Lecky picking up his first win, um, good drive from him and a, and a great streamer from from both commentators. Well, definitely well worth a watch if you haven't been able to pick it up just yet. Tomorrow night at eight o'clock UK time, you can join myself as we go around Zuhai again in the GT3s. Um, that's going to be a, a an awesome race. We saw a complete mix-up last week um, with uh, Blank File and Immortalis sort of finishing mid-pack. Um, that's definitely going to be all, all to play for and well worth coming to find out. And on Sunday as well at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we have got the uh, Stock Car Championship and they are also at Willow Springs. Um, they finished round at Daytona Oval last week. So I'm don't, not sure I've seen the stock cars go around a proper road track before. So I'm definitely going to be tuning in to find out how they fare on with that. And big heavy beasts that they are. Not really designed for track racing, but... I'm sure these guys will show us how it is done. Moving on to Tuesday and with Murphy and the touring cars, we head to Alton Park International. Um, that is going to be a brilliant race, a brilliant track, great for touring cars, super narrow um, and super quick. So expect lots of overtaking, lots of pushing and shoving, got to be great fun. Um, on the Thursday, we join Lecky as he hosts the GT1s and they go to Zolder, um, an absolute brilliant track um, for any uh, race car and I believe Lingo has taken both wins so far so he'll probably be looking to make it a hat trick but I could be wrong. And on the Friday night, the last one, we have the GTEs in uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Time and they are going to be heading into Sonoma. Um, an absolute dog of a track as far as I'm concerned super hot super bumpy super narrow um, and super quick Lecky as I said took the win yesterday in Willow Springs in the GTEs so he'll be trying to keep that momentum going into um, next week you'll have to tune in with Carlin to find out how they fare also in the in the world of Flux Motorsport we have recently revamped our website given it given her an old oh, complete new facelift so be sure to go check that out and whilst you're there we've also released our brand new shop so flux merch is now available to all and everyone shipping worldwide so be sure to go get yourself a t-shirt maybe a, a little iphone case or, or a sticker maybe whatever takes your fancy um yeah pick it up leave us a review give it a shout about it, share it with your friends um everything goes back to helping the uh the flux community and bringing better prizes streams um 
improving the community in any which way we can we're always looking to improve so be sure to go check that out um share it as i said show it some love uh, it is all much appreciated so as we turn back to the final 50 seconds of this race Immortalis still hanging on to third position all lonely and alone it's like a very sad movie this one this is where the sad ending be everyone get the tissues ready and start crying for him Mia has managed to hold on to second place looks like she's not going to be able to get enough done to get on hold of the back of Bruce Bruce um, provided nothing crazy happens in the last 30 seconds looks like he's going to take the win um, redeeming him redeeming the win from last week so his campaign back on track um, for another flux championship Chris still sitting in fourth Doug Diggler in fifth Doug Diggler falling a little bit uh, further back we saw him sitting third um, in qualifying so uh, all in all actually really a, a great showing from him um, we saw him have a little spin into turn one on that one so doing well there to hang on um, Gio in sixth DCF in seventh from Toasty in eighth Lecky getting himself up to ninth um, great drive from him we saw him didn't put a qualifying lap in started at the back got up to seventh um, within the first couple of laps we didn't see what happened but definitely ended up in the wall um, picking up damage pitting going back to the back of the grid and now finding his way back to ninth so getting in the top 10 so good points for him good recovery drive all around from last week where he scored nada tibby rounds out the top 10 pogo in 11th porsche man 12th spunk my 13th taijo in 14th we saw him fall back from mid pack green gaming in 15th um, but we suspect there's going to be some stewards reviews looking into him with um, what I suspect is Mark in 16th who's had an absolute shock of race we saw him pick up damage um, early on in the race and not really able to get back in the saddle afterwards so it appears that that is the race is done as she pops up looks like something happened to Mia but it looks like she's still going to take second place place probably ran out of fuel if I had to guess guys I did say earlier on that fuel was going to play a big part of this so Bruce takes the win Mia in second Immortalis takes third after that shock incident with a bat marker um, hate to see it it was, a, it was a great race between the top three um, I would have loved to have seen it how it had played out um, all the way to the end and maybe with all the cameras as well would have been nice but was not meant to be so there you have it it looks like yeah Immortalis has run out of fuel as well as he heads straight back to the pit early not opting for a um, parade lap the final 40 seconds we just hit down getting the final guys through as I said the people who are just joining us I can't change any of the cameras Giacomo has taken them all with them on strike sod I know he's watching I know he can hear me <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just just playing of course technical difficulties happen to all of us out of our control I'm afraid thank you for jumping over and joining us on the on the backup stream we'll opt to get these fixed for next week final 10 seconds and I'll be able to run down the final race results with you all we promised you it'd be a close and tight race and it has delivered the top three were only separated by a second for most of that race so super close driving and action throughout all of them and here we go here are the final standings so Bruce taking the top spot um, Mia taking second and Immortalis sorry comes into third place and it looks like he picked up fastest lap as well so he will get an extra bonus point for his troubles although I'm pretty sure that won't take away the woes of this race Chris M Sport takes home fourth good drive from him toasty picks up fifth dc in sixth Dirk diggler drops down to seventh i'm not sure what happened to him maybe a fuel problem on the final lap we'll have to go and find out from him lecky getting himself up to eighth in the end tibby takes over home ninth pogo rounds out the top 10 porsche man dropping down to 11th taijo in 12th spunkmeyer in 13th G giona in 14th Green Gaming in 15th and Mark in 16th. So there you have it, LMP2's round two um, in Zuhai. Thank you all for joining us. 
Um, I apologise for me and Giacomo. We'll be back next week um, bringing you uh, the race at... Let me just double check where it was. It's a Quito, that is it. So we're going to be heading around uh, Japan, a super tight, windy track. Really going to push these guys a lot different to Zuhai. Uh, we a lot to see a lot of high downforce instead of the low downforce uh, sort of drag cars we've had today. So make sure you're tuning in for that one. After this race, um, at 8 o'clock Eastern, we have got the Indy cars. So be sure to come back and check them out as well. From me and Giacomo, thank you for joining us tonight. And anyway, see you next time. Thank you and good night.